Welcome back guys for another Odyssey video. In this video I will show you a complete new guide how to create a build in 2023. Because a lot of stuff has actually changed in the past 3 years. We have new items, we have found new glitches and we will cover all that for creating a really good build in 2023 in this tutorial. One of the most significant changes is that you no longer have to decide between Hunter, Warrior or Assassin. Basically any build you will create in 2023 will be able to do completely everything for you for all playstyles. We will just create the ultimate hybrid build in this tutorial. This has to do with some new powerful engravings that came with Corfu Island that give you so much damage that it is no longer needed to specialize your build. The first core item or mechanic that should be used in any build is the Corfu or Champion Ostraka. This Ostraka can be found on Corfu Island when you go to the Kolaidi farm in the north, collect the tablet and then go to the northeast of the map and solve the riddle at the docks. This engraving alone does not give you the written 100%, in fact it will give you 200% for all 3 base types. Another good thing is that you can engrave the champion engraving on any of your armor items. You don't need to use any weapon, you can simply engrave it somewhere where you have room on your armor. And for most of these builds that is likely either on the boots or the torso or on your belt. So the first item for our build will be a perfect set of warrior boots with warrior damage, critical chance and critical damage and I already engraved the champion Ostraka. 100% damage but minus 100% resistances on it. The second core item which should be used in any build is the damage conversion. With the damage conversion and the core for engraving you can actually create another 100% damage out of nowhere. The damage conversion works with percentages, so it doesn't matter if you want to convert assassin, hunter or warrior damage since it uses percentages, all three types will be equally strong. The damage conversion will also ignore every damage that is already marked as all damage, such as the all damage engravings and even the Fox of Olympus engravings. Those damages will not be converted. But the Corfu Champion Ostraka is immune against this. So if you convert 50% damage out of 200% you will just get another 100% damage to the other two types. Which is a major glitch that just gives you 100% damage out of nowhere. And speaking about glitches, of course the most important item we should use in every build is the Beacon Bow. Because the Beacon Bow multiplies your warrior damage by a factor of 1.6 because it adds all its 6495 DPS to your left melee weapon. And since it also uses your warrior damage when shooting arrows, it literally makes your hunter damage become useless. And that is a really good thing because we only have to focus on two damage types, warrior and assassin damage. So we can safely use the hunter damage conversion to convert 100% out of the hunter damage conversion and add it to warrior and assassin damage. So the second item we will put in our build is the beacon bow and we will engrave it with the hunter damage conversion. This will immediately bring our warrior damage to 47,000 warrior damage without even having selected a single melee weapon and we already have over 600,000 assassin damage and we are still missing almost the entire armor. So the three core things that should be used in any build right from the start are the champion Ostraka with its 200% damage bonus combined with the hunter damage conversion and the beacon bow. These three things alone will account for almost 50% for the damage in all your builds. So you are almost 50% done and the rest will be easy as pie. Before we put everything together we also have to select the preferred melee weapon type for our build. There are 6 different melee weapon types and all of them have pros and cons. In general it doesn't matter but if you want the highest damage and the best moveset I strongly recommend you to use Aether swords or blunts. Because if you play with daggers for example, daggers can only deal half the damage per hit than any other weapon type and they have literally no range. And staffs and spears have a really bad moveset and especially bad overpower attacks. So the best of the pack in my opinion with not a single bad moveset and overall very good performance are swords and blunts. But of course you can use any melee weapon type you want. No matter what weapon type you decide to play with, your weapon should always have warrior damage, damage with your weapon type like damage with swords, damage with daggers, damage with spears and critical damage. These are the 3 best engravings for melee weapons and they should always be like that. If you play with blunts you have to get damage with blunts, if you play with axes you have to get damage with axes. For this tutorial we will pick 2 perfect epic blunts with warrior damage, critical damage and damage with heavy blunts. You should always make sure to use 2 weapons of the same type to maximize your weapon damage because weapon damage is an additional multiplier that greatly increases your damage. When playing with the big hand bow it is also important to use the correct melee weapon because only the left weapon will get the increased damage value. So make sure when you equip your weapons that you have the correct melee weapon equipped. 
this melee weapon should also be equipped when shooting arrows. The legendary engravings to engrave on your melee weapon should always be either armor penetration, the 100% damage from the Falx engraving or the damage conversion. In this tutorial we will engrave armor penetration on the first weapon and the additional 100% damage from the Falx engraving on the other one. We already have damage conversion on our bow, so we have all the three best weapon engravings in our build. So by just adding perfect weapons we get 194,000 warrior damage and over 780,000 assassin damage. So you can see how important it is to get the correct weapons and only a few engravings can make a big difference. The first thing you have to consider when completing your armor items is what weapon you actually play with. Because when you play with daggers and swords you will get additional damage with daggers and swords on your helmet. When you play with blades and heavy blunts you will get additional damage for blades and heavy blunts on your torso and when you play with staffs or spares you will get additional damage with staffs and spares on your boots. In this case we will have to get a torso that has 20% damage with heavy weapons and an additional 30% damage with heavy blunts. So we get the additional maximum 50% damage with heavy blunts on our torso. Of course if you play with a sword build you have to find a corresponding helmet with damage swords and damage swords and daggers and if you want to make a spare build you have to use boots that come with damage spares and damage spares and staffs. Picking this perfect torso with the maximum amount of weapon damage has further increased our damage in this tutorial build to 237,000 warrior damage for the left melee weapon. When we now fill all the remaining slots with perfect crit chance and crit damage engravings it should look like that. On the helmet you get 20% crit chance at full health and 50% critical damage. On the bracers we get 50% crit damage, 100% crit damage and 10% crit chance. On the belt we will get 100% crit damage and 10% chance. On the torso we only can engrave 50% critical damage and on the boots again we get 20% chance and 100% damage. That is the maximum amount of critical damage and critical chance engraving you can engrave on your gear. All the remaining unfilled slots should be filled with 20% warrior damage engravings like here on the belt and on the head. Please don't forget when you make a dagger or sword build you should engrave damage daggers or damage swords on your headgear and when you play with staffs or spears you should engrave damage staffs or damage spears on your boots. Doing that will also block some of the crit chance and crit damage engravings but you should always first go for these weapon damage engravings no matter if you lose a critical damage or crit chance engraving by doing that. If you want to add some tankiness in your build there are basically only two remaining options because with the core for engraving we are sitting at minus 100% resistances. By adding more resistance you will never counter this effect. So one of the remaining options is to engrave ignore half damage. We can do that on our headgear and on our belt. By adding two 40% ignore half damage we get 80% ignore half damage and we will also get the remaining 20% from our masteries. At 100% ignore half damage we will receive only half the amount of damage from every hit we take. That will completely counter the minus 100% resistance and will let us play with receiving only the normal amount of damage. But this only works when playing at full health. So if you want to use that you should remove the Falx engraving and replace it with something else like permanent fire damage for example. The other remaining option that will only use one engraving slot is to get Ezo Enhance engraved on your headgear. Ezo Enhance will completely protect you for 20 seconds whenever you get hit. It also has a 2 minute cooldown but you can reset that by using RS Madness which is really powerful as well. So in summary when you play with the Corf engraving and with the Falx engraving and you want some protection in your build then you should use Ezo Enhance. If you play with a full health bar you can go for ignore half damage as well. Resistances should only be used when not playing with the core for engraving. Health and armor is entirely useless so never go for it. But even after completing your perfect epic gear set you should not forget that there are many flat bonuses available in the ability tree. So make sure to get all these free bonuses for critical damage, critical chance, warrior damage and everything else. Last but not least we also have the masteries. When you invest your first mastery points you should first go for crit chance and crit chance at full health. And only after that you should go for the damage with your weapon type. That could be damage with any weapon you want to play with like damage with swords, damage with daggers or damage with heavy blunts. Just make sure you pick the correct damage with your weapon type for your build. After that you can focus on critical damage at full health and the normal critical damage. And after that you can focus on anything else like warrior damage, armor penetration, assassin damage, hunter damage, fire damage, whatever you want to. When you fill out any of these master abilities make sure you don't fill them completely. Only go for 10 or 15 points and then move on to the next one. 
because the second half of the points will give you way less bonus than the first half. Only if you are swimming in points and you don't know where to spend them, you can really start to max them out. I hope you really liked this new updated tutorial. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.